Hey, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. We are now officially into spring via the Gregorian calendar. And uh, we've actually been there in the Chinese calendar for uh, since January. But uh, uh, so I thought it'd be a, a good thing to at least touch on that uh, briefly and uh, to talk about the, the wood chi that is associated with spring. And uh, so the wood chi is of the five elements. It is the one that it uh, actually initiates the year. It's, it's, it's where things get started off and it it's, has an up and out kind of quality. So you imagine like uh, you know, a tree going up and, 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 and the branches extending from that. So that's sort of that element of wood there is that up and out kind of, kind of quality, expansive, yang. So going from, from the yin of, of water and winter to the yang, the maximum yang of summer. summer. So uh, we're, we're doing that. So the, um, just wanna talk briefly about, about that and, uh, and focus on one thing that I'd like to, uh, to include in, in our work. And that is the, uh, the body parts that are associated with liver or with wood are our liver and uh, the eyes and the uh, fingernails. And liver has this quality, wood energy has actually has this quality of, of um, uh, mediating extremes. So anything that kind of gets way too in one direction, the liver goes in there to kind of calm it down. It's also related to uh, to the, the blood and, and, and getting blood to, uh, to the whole system. So it controls the blood. So the, uh, but that uh, I want to particularly focus on the nails because it's, uh, for me, that's one way that I have to immediately click into the wood chi is to feel your fingernails as though you have like you're a cat and you have these claws there. And if you just just feel the claws on, on, the, at the, on the, the tips of your fingers there and on the, with the nails, you'll notice that there's immediately there's a, there's a, a tingling that, that, that occurs there. And that activates the wood chi and that, oh, tendons, that's the other thing that it does. So it, it connects up with your connective tissue system. So you immediately get this whole body energetic connection just by becoming a big panther, you know, and uh, so you're, you have this, that, that wood chi immediately, and that has this creative young kind of, kind of thrusting that, uh, that is associated with the season. Think of uh, the daffodils in my front yard. You know, they've been, they've been out there for, for over a month now, just they've been kind of pushing up and saying, you know, hey, we're, we're back. And, uh, you know, and, and all the, uh, the, the roses and everything are starting to, to activate their, their wood chi. So we wanna have that quality, we wanna have access to that quality, that woody quality in our, uh, in our in our body mind, we're going to be able to to express the the woodiness, the uh, the creative impulse of the season, that sparkling uh, kind of curiosity that animates us. So, if you just just feel those 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 fingernails, and just pause for a moment and just just notice what that does immediately to the whole body mind. So when we're doing some stuff tonight, we're going to you know, initiate from the fingernails. So I usually will have you initiating from, you know, like point and reach with the index finger. And that's still very valid too. But this is a, a way of actually taking that and cranking up one element, really focusing on the wood aspect whenever we do that. So the... Um, Last week, we talked about the sequential activation of joints, and I'd like to take that another step uh, into that because it's, it's something which is so counterintuitive that it's easy for the conscious mind to block it out 
you know, we had some fun with it last week. Great. Okay. And then put it on the shelf and forget about it. And I really wanted to uh, bring it up on, again, just so that maybe you'll practice that, that feeling that, that, that learning to consciously activate your, your arms in a way that, that allows for the expression of chin of you know the ability to express energy through the body your chin and that effortless power that comes with that because if you uh, you know just to kind of recapitulate some of that what we talked about is that you ask most people to to lift their arm and they'll they'll do what they'll do that they'll lift from the shoulder and that's because that is the programming that is deeply embedded into your body mind not only from you know your the experience and the patterning you get from watching other people and you know, something you've been doing since you're you know push yourself up in your crib or something it was you know your those were the muscles that enabled you to make something happen and um, it's also in our dna it's something that you know millions of years of of evolution have brought us to this point and it works up to a point, but it also kind of can be problematic. And a lot of people, by the time they get to be my age, they the shoulder joints are kind of worn out and they have a lot of problems with them, a lot of pain involved with the, uh, with the shoulder joint. And because we, particularly those of us who are in the martial arts or in the sports or whatever, we have a tendency to want to do more than with the shoulders than they're really structurally able to handle. It's because the muscles in your shoulders are not really that strong, you know, for the, for the most part, at least relative to what it is we ask them to do. And as a result, they tend to, they get, it's easy to tear them up and create problems in the muscles, problems in the tendons and the ligaments, etc. And uh, so what we want to do is uh, learn to be able to move more efficiently by moving exactly the opposite of the way that we have been programmed to do. And that is we initiate distally. That was from the from the end point rather than from the shoulder joint, which is, it's, if you've never tried this before, it sounds a little crazy, and, uh, but it actually empowers you to, to be able to, to move fluidly and relaxedly and, and to be able to express energy through your body in a way that is very difficult to do if you are kinking the hose by tightening up your shoulders or moving your arm in a way that is not efficient. So the uh, just to recapitulate, we're we're going to start distally. That is, we're going to start with the fingers. And you know, last week I talked about pointing and reaching with your index finger, and that is that is uh, that's that is is a good all around approach. It brings the your what you're doing is you're bringing attention to the end point. So instead of instead of starting up here and then by and you're kind of moving your arm around as if it's like this big club, you actually are using your fingers. They like, it's like they have little, little brains in them and they are, they're intelligent whenever you bring your awareness to there as your first order of business. So tonight, instead of just pointing with the index finger, I want you to feel those claws, feel those, those tiger claws and, uh, and initiate from there. So just notice it right now. You, if you just with your right hand, you just feel with those your fingernails. Notice that it brings more awareness to your hand than perhaps you normally will give it. So that allows the chi to flow all the way to the end of your fingertips, which many people they can practice for years and, and really not feel the chi in our hands. And here we can get it if we just we just start with that uh, start with that little motion. 
And so once we get that, once we've established that, we've established a whole body energetic connection with that, we're going to then activate the wrist. And we do that by doing something which is also counterintuitive because people tend to want to lock their wrists. And uh, what we're asking, what I'm asking you to do is to feel those fingernails and then bend the wrist. So just doing that, just right now with your hands in your lap or standing up or whatever, you uh, just feel your fingernails and then just bend the wrist. I just notice what doing that does to your body mind, how that changes your field. It changes your state of being immediately just by just by that simple action of bending the wrist, right? And so, you know, and when I was first initiated into, you know, Taiji, it was like, you know, they talked about, oh, you wanted to find the beautiful lady's wrist, you know, that, 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 where that soft curve there, which is accurate, but it doesn't actually, um, it kind of misses the mark in the sense that it's how you get there that creates the, creates the energy. Holding your, your hand in that position, just as a, you know, uh, uh, a fixture is not going to get you there, but going from here to here does. It's the, it's the activation that going into that, that rounded, rounded wrist allows you to bring your awareness. So it's that conscious activation of the wrist that permits you to shift your state of being. And this is something you can do anywhere. I was like, you know, I talk about elevator Tai Chi in that, in the sense of, you know, what, what can you do if you're in a crowded elevator and you don't want to call a lot of attention to yourself to practice your Tai Chi and you just stand there and you feel your fingers, fingernails, you feel your wrists and, you know, and, and you know, your feel because the people may start moving to the other side of the elevator just because they're feeling something weird going on, but you're, you're using that to amplify your field and getting comfortable in that. Also, every time you do that, you're creating new neural connections which, makes it, which make it easier to go there, easier to establish that pattern and to, to create the, the gin anytime you want. It's not something that you say, okay, what was that thing I was supposed to do with the, with the wrist or something like that? Yeah. No, it's, it's something that you have it just part of who you are, and you do it because it makes you feel good. It makes you feel ah, oh, that alive. It makes you feel you know really uh, uh, expensive. So you want to be able to do it. So that's so the first step is get your fingers, your fingernails, or your index finger, whatever you want to get that get that initiate from the from the the end point to establish the whole arm as a as a, an extension of the energy system, which is your whole body. And then you, from the wrist, you then go to the elbow. And the elbow, we, we want to just reach with the elbow. And we played around with this before, but just you know, one way of, of training yourself to do this, because this is not, not something which is, comes easily for a lot of people. That is, okay, feel your elbow, like, what does that mean? Uh, we don't have the the patterning in establishing the nervous system to to do that. We'll feel sure we'll feel if we bang it on on the edge of a table or something, but we want to be able to reach with that elbow. So if you put your hand on your chest and you just reach down with the elbow, you'll notice that you open up the shoulder joint when you do that. So you're reaching down and. We start with, with the reaching down just because it's the simplest thing where you have your hand here. That means that you are, it's a really simple motion. There's only one moving part here and that is you're reaching with the elbow and that's opening the shoulder. And so notice that it's not pushing down with the shoulder, it is reaching. So it's like a sense of pulling, the elbow is pulling the, the arm uh, rather than, uh, taking the shoulder and pushing down with it because that actually creates the, uh, the opposite effect of what we want. So it's just ah, like that. After you get comfortable with that, you can 
reach with your elbow in any direction you can and and you should you should practice that in every every which way to you because you want to cultivate this elbow chin this cho energy and um if you do that if we just right now you're you're sitting there and you're or you're standing there and you just feel your fingers you you bend the wrist you and then reach with the elbows and just notice that immediately you light up it's like ah there's there's this vitality that happens the whole system starts to like pulse with with uh, vitality and so there's so we've got fingers wrists elbows and after that, then the shoulder follows, but as a passive, uh, as a passenger on, on the train. So we've got this, uh, like this, the shoulder opens up, and but it is becoming a conduit for the energy rather than a, the um, uh, muscular locomotive that is driving that train. So we want it to, to, to go along. And what happens is that you're able to execute like a very graceful movement with a very relaxed arm which has much more effective power than if you were to initiate from your shoulder with a stiff arm it's like not even close how much how much power there is or even if you're just pushing with your with your arm it's it you know if we get this very light very fluid motion boom then we're actually able to generate more internal power which then is able to to uh, uh, express much more effective force than than muscular tension can so and then what we do is we integrate that with our three pillars of energetic uh, body mind spirit integration and if we get those things together then we're 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 pumped up and ready to go so what i would like to do is to explore those in a uh, in a some movements that we've done before but i do not expect anyone to remember even though the movements themselves are not that complex I don't want you focusing on, you know, what do I do next kind of a thing. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to talk you through it. And our primary goal here is to just feel into the internal experience of what's going on. I want you to really feel into your 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 body mind. Feel the you know feel the chi, feel the jin, and feel the vitality that is. That is getting created by these motions. We're going to do the uh, Wu Dong Tai Yi uh, Wu Xing Chen, just the first few movements of it. Nothing terribly complex, but at the same time, you'll see that there's many, many nuances to this because I'm going to be, we're going to do it nice and slow, and I'm going to talk you through all the little nuances that uh, that pop up there and that make it really work okay so uh before we stand up are there any questions yes scott um <clears throat> so i assume that after we've kind of got this i mean for me i don't it just all seems to happen as one right it's not like i don't feel it in my fingers and then my wrist and then my elbow it's all it just seems to be a a continuum really okay is that uh, is that what we're looking for here or ultimately yes but um you know the, the way to check and see if you're not cheating you know is to have somebody you know pressing on your on your wrist as you as you do it you know just holding your arm just you know giving you so putting you in, in a uh, a vulnerable position and having you see if you can execute from that so and or do you go back and rely on muscular force to make it happen and and uh, the the key here and i think this is a really good point you're making up there you're bringing up scott and that is that you know we can just being relaxed is not the goal 
That is, that is just getting out of our own way so that we can move in the right direction. The, the next part is, do I have the jinn, you know, from, uh, you know, from these, from these motions, am I able to express the energy in a way that has that effortless power? So that's the, uh, that's the way to do it. So if I, I would say that, uh, you know, doing it piece by piece is helpful. Doing it, you know, sequentially rather than all at once uh, allows you to observe where maybe you're glossing over the, uh, you know, the motion. I know for me, you know, even though I, I can do it all at once, I still benefit from, from breaking down and doing every step in the sequence as, as, as its own thing. That makes sense. But yeah, it's just that like when I'm not, when I'm not really like thinking about each specific step, it just sort of happens and everything just seems to be everything just, you know, and that's great. It seems to be right in my world when it, when that happens, when I'm just not thinking about it. That, that, that's great. And, and you can compare it to say a, a pianist, you know, someone who's really <laughs> adept at, at, at the piano, you know, they, it just, it's, it's an effortless thing, but they still go back and practice their scales. Right. You know, so they still, they, you know, they still go back and do the, you know, work on the fundamentals so that they are able to, to know, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm cheating here. I'm, you know, I'm kind of sliding through. And so I think there's an advantage of training that way. Uh, someone else had their hand up. Yeah, Ron. Are you on mute, Ron? How's that? That's good. That okay. No, I like Scott's question. So mine's very similar where you go through the checklist of the hands, but now what about the breath, the qua, the feet, the 10,000 things. How do you calm the mind down to kind of do a checklist of everything? Uh, yeah, that, that's, 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 the, the, that's the game, isn't it? It is, to, it is. <laughs> to, uh, you want to be and, everywhere and, at once. And so the, uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk you through it. So Good. you don't have to think about what's what else what you're missing or anything because I'm gonna I'm going to really do it nice and slow so we can we can enjoy each piece of that and see how all those pieces you just mentioned fit together to create that and and breaking it down as a sequence rather than just one fluid seamless motion is you know like I say it's like learning your scales. Perfect. Cool. Anybody else? Good questions. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, stand up and uh, we'll uh, we'll do this. First, we want to establish our three pillars. We do this for everything. What that does is it, it opens us up to the big G and makes sure that your body mind is in a heightened state of coherence and that to some degree you have unkinked the hose. That is your, your gut, you release muscular tension in some of the areas which where are the uh, the chi can get really blocked up and, and really uh, uh, lessen your your capacity to to feel it and express it. So let's just begin with our feet heels together, toes apart and feel into the balls of your feet and bend the knees. Not much, just unlock them basically. So you want to feel yourself kind of in that slightly precarious position, like you're standing on a diving board and you're ready to dive in. And there's there's a 
there's a, a sense of, of up and out. At the same time, you're sinking down and in. So we're, the energy is going in two different directions. You're releasing down, sinking down into the earth. And just by your body position, you're, you're creating this expansive energy. Reach with the crown of your head. So we're establishing a, an upward pull, reaching upward with the crown down through the feet. So the earth chi is allowed to come up through the feet. The yang chi descends from the sky, and the heavens. Tuck in your chin and open up the jade pillow gate at the base of your skull. Relax your lower back, relax your buttocks, let your, ah, let your body sink at the same time as you're reaching up. So there is an extension of your spine as you do that. You're reaching down with your coccyx, your, your tailbone. Feel those fingernails. Feel the energy in your hands as you do that. Feel the tingling, pulsing electricity in your hands. Reach with your elbows. So you're reaching and opening the shoulder joints. And Spiral down, you just into the hip joint. You're just releasing tension around the pelvis. So we're opening the the qua, coming sung in the qua. We're sinking into into the qua. So we have our three pillars: a central equilibrium, energetic coherence. Now. And there's, you're unkink the hose. The shoulders are open. The jade pillow gate is open. The claw is open. So those are your three, the three big ones that I'm focusing on here in terms of gates. And now we're going to do the, just the first few movements of the Wudong Mountain Tai Yi, Wuxing Chan. Feel the ball of your right foot and set the right knee and spiral down to the left. So you're loading up that right, the right claw, and then turn to the right. Pick up the left heel and step out and feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. Spiral down to the right. So you're loading up the left claw now and then turning and you're back to center. So the weight's now 50-50. Feel those fingernails. The arms are slightly rounded. You're reaching with the elbows and opening the shoulder joints. Feel the, the energy that's already moving throughout your body mind. This is the stuff we're gonna play with here. Now feel the balls of both feet, set both knees. You gotta bow forward slightly and reach down with your hands. So I feel those fingernails as if you're grasping some with those claws. And then as you straighten up, you feel the fingers 
Bend the wrists. Feel that. Reach with the elbows. Now reach with the wrists as you're coming up. The elbows follow the wrists. You get up to and, and do bring it up to whatever height. I mean, if you're if your arms only will want you to go up this high, that's perfectly fine. You know, or middle of your chest, don't take it up any higher than this. So you just want to, middle of your chest is perfect. You want to feel that, feel the fingers reaching toward each other now and, and reaching with your elbows and opening up between your shoulder blades. So you're kind of pulling the shoulder blades apart by reaching with your elbows. So this is the, the Tai Chi posture. That is the grand ultimate. It's the undifferentiated somethingness. And then feel the balls of your feet, set the knees and sink. And as you sink into your, your dropping down, rotate. So your fingers, your wrists, your elbows, rotating your forearms so that your palms are reaching forward. So we've begun this process. There's a sort of a young, a young ex expression here as we're opening up this way. You're still reaching with those, those elbows, the fingers, feel those fingernails. We haven't gotten very far yet, but the energy is really starting to crank up. Feel those balls of your feet. Okay, now you're going to, we're going to open this. Now what's gonna happen here is this is we're separating the yin and the yang. So you're reaching out with your elbows, pulling your hands apart and just feel the resistance as the hands want to be back together, but you're reaching out with the elbows because they're we're creating these poles in opposition, which is creating energy. Reach you with those elbows. Now the wrists, fingers. Again, if your arms feel more comfortable down here, that's perfectly fine. The key here is to be able to get to where you feel your sweet spot is. Feel the pulsing in your hands. Notice that the wrists are bent here. There's an expression of, 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 of energy here. So now feel the ball of your right foot, set the right knee and begin to spiral down and turning to the right. And as you do that, Reach with your right elbow, your right wrist, and you're starting to create a little circle there. Now we're going to go to the left foot, left ball, left, left knee, and we're going to reach with the left hand, and we're going to make a little circle there, and then back to the right. So we're getting this, all this is happening almost so, I'm doing it very obviously right now but you're back and forth feeling that those spirals that you're generating with your arms, okay? And we're creating this spiraling energy by reaching and extending and shifting. So that we're, we're creating this yin-yang pulsing now. So as I turn to the right and reach with my right hand, that's yang, my right hand's yang, now my, left hand is young as I go to the left side. We're doing that. So now, so what's happening here is this very gently, we're creating these little spirals, which are going through the whole body. You're feeling it down through your feet and into the earth. And now feel the ball of the left foot. You set the left knee and spiral down to the right and then turn to the left. And as you do that, as you turn to the left, 
the right hand, the yang hand is rotating as it's coming down and you step back with the right foot. So you're, you're reaching with the left hand. That's the yin hand here. You're reaching there, but you're also, the yang hand is extended outward, palm up. So we've gone from here to here. So now we step with the right foot. Do the ball, set the knee of the right, and then spiral down to the left. So you're loading up that right claw, spiraling to the left. Reach with that right elbow, wrist. Rotate your forearm and turn your body and reaching out with that yang hand, the right hand, the left hand is reaching the other direction, the yin hand, your eyes are on the right hand. So just feel the energy, that spiraling energy that's going through the whole system right now. Pivot with your left heel, turn it out to like on 45, feel the ball, set the knee, so you're loading up that left leg and you're spiraling down to the right. Reach with your left elbow. Feel that. It's a different kind of feeling. It's similar to the, the, right, the right side, but it's a little different. We maybe we don't have words for how different that feels, but it's, it's something. We got that, so now we're going to pivot on that elbow and bring the left hand out. So now the left hand is the yang hand. You're looking at your left hand. You're reaching with that yin hand, the right hand. And you're feeling that lengthening in the body. Feeling that oh, the sinews, we're back to the liver again. We're back to the wood chi. The sinews are are expanded. Their your arms are relaxed, but they're they're being pulled by this expansion, by this wood chi. Feeling those fingernails, and then feel the ball of your right foot. You're gonna pivot out on that. So the right foot's on a 45. You feel the ball of that foot. You reach with the elbow. Feel the ball set the knee spiral down to the left. So you're loading up the right leg, spiraling down to the left. So you're starting to feel that. You're reaching to that elbow. And now turn and reach with the right hand. Left hand is yin, the right hand is, is yang. I'm feeling that, that very stably in the right leg. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the right, to the left. So as we're turning and, and bring the left foot in and the left hand, reach with the fingernails, the wrist, the elbow, boom. So we're here, we're a mirror image of what we were before with the, when we're doing this on the right side. So the left hand is the young hand now. Step with the left foot. Step back a little bit. Step with the left foot on the 45. Do the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the, to the right. You're loading up that left claw. Reach with the left elbow. Feel that left wrist, bend the wrist and rotate. So you got the elbow, the wrists, the fingers. And then turn, and you're following the left hand now. That's the young hand. Feel into the energy of that. Now feel the ball of the uh, pivot on your right heel. Feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee. Spiral down to the left. Reach with the right elbow. 
Feel the right wrist and turn. Right hand is young, left hand is yin. Feel the ball of the, or pivot on your left heel. Feel the ball of the left foot, push your left knee out, set that, spiral down to the right. You're loading up the left quad, we're spiraling down to the right. Reach with the left elbow, left wrist. And then turn, left hand comes up. Reach with that. Feel that extension, that opening. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. You're starting to turn the reach with the right elbow, right wrist, fingers. You start to rotate that forearm and step back in with the right foot. Right palm reaching out, left hand reaching up. That left arm is rounded. You're sinking in that left claw. Step with the right foot, right ball. Push your right knee forward. Reach with the right elbow. Rotate, feel that right wrist, you're rotating. Reaching with the hand. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the right, turn to the right, the left hand comes across, reaches out. So both hands are in front of you, rounded, they're big, it's, extended and now you feel the ball of the left foot set the left knee and spiral down to the right and sink into that that left foot feel feel the ball of the left foot set the left knee spiral down to the right you're loading up that left claw and then turn Feel that connection there, the reaching with the elbows, reaching with the wrists, reaching with the fingers, reaching with the crown of the head. Feel that big expansive energy, but also feel the attraction that the hands have for each other. Feel the balls of both feet, set both knees in sync. Feel the elbows, the wrists, rotate the forearms. Feel those fingernails reaching out. Feel that expansion, that feel that yang chi. And then press down. Very relaxed. Yes, stand there in that neutral posture, in that Wu Ji stance. And allow the energy to circulate throughout your body mind. Allow it to do whatever it needs to do fix whatever needs fixing. Feel the pulsing. Feel the flow of the blood in your veins.
Feel the electricity in your arms. Step in. And take a deep breath. And sink, press down, but throw away the chi. Let it all go. Dissolve into the emptiness. Please have a seat. Rick. Uh, I went out. Did anybody else go out or was it just me? It just, what does it mean you. out? Uh, it just stopped working. You froze up. The screen went black or it went dark. I tried to get back on and it just said connecting, connecting, connecting. But were you going, you were going the whole time? Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I missed, I'll, I'll check the uh, video when it comes on. Okay, cool. Yeah. You don't want to miss this one. <laughs> I got, I got, I got to 845 and then it comes oh, out. Okay. That's good. Okay. Well, you, you, you're just about, just about to the finish line there. What I would like to do before we go any further, I'd like to just demonstrate for you those few moves, just so you can see them as a, you know, as a continuous package, just so you can see what what we did. We broke it down into really fine detail, but it's uh, uh well, take a look here. Jonathan. Hi there. Maybe because you broke it down first, this form more than any you've introduced seemed like almost fit for jazz improvisation, like get the polarities, you know, get certain coherences together and just do your own thing with it. But keep, you know, keep that energy coherence together, keep the polarity together. It, it just really seemed like a beautiful form to improvise. Like don't get, at least at first, don't even try to remember the steps of it. But just the feel of it that you gave us. You could certainly once you once you learn it, you can certainly improvise off of it. But it's more of a more Mozart than jazz. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> it it you, you know there is there is a 
a <laughs> there is a symphony there that the, the notes are written down. So uh, you know you you could going from that you could improvise, and I have just just by breaking down, just by showing you that that tiny little snippet, which you know kept us occupied for quite a while. Um, right. You know, but by breaking down the components as they are, you can right. see how each one leads to the to something else. You know, it it creates the opportunity for other energies to arise. Right. Anybody? Scott. Uh I'd like to talk to you, but I got to go build the ark, and Valerie's going to get two of every animal right now. <laughs> Jeez. Pouring here. <laughs> um, can you, me and Valerie both would like to know what do actually all the words in that, the name of that form mean? Oh, okay. You know? uh, no? It's fun. So the, the, the first one is Wudong Mountain, which is a a place in China, which is the legendary birthplace of the internal martial arts, particularly Taiji Chuan. It's uh, 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 Jonathan and I uh, had had the opportunity to go there a few years ago, and uh, that was a whole bunch of a lot of fun. And uh, uh, the uh, you know the, it's it's a really mystical, wonderful, glorious place to be. Maria was there too, and uh, so we. Uh, we, we, we had, a, had a great time, but it's a, so the Wudong Mountain, Tai Yi, so Tai means very big, you know, grand, great, ultimate. So it's, uh, uh, so uh, the Tai Yi is mind. So it's like, think of it as big mind, you know, or you could think of it as, you know, like expanded consciousness, that kind of thing. So it's Tai Ji is, is the, uh, is the uh, 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 the grand form or grand you know state, and and the tai e is 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 the grand mind or the the big mind, and uh, so wudong wudong mountain tai e wuxing tran, so uh, wuxing tran uh, wuxing is, are the five elements, so that's the um, you know, wood, fire, earth, metal, water, and Chuan is is form or um, you know martial art or something like that. So Wudong Mountain Tai Yi Wuxing Chuan. That good. Okay. Yeah, works for me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else? Da, 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 da. Okay. So anyway, there's a, there's a lot to, uh, as you can see, there's a whole lot going on in there. Breaking it down like that, until you can see each component, you can see how to create energy. I guess kind of what Jonathan, you're you're saying there, Jonathan, it's like you know, if you can master even that little snippet that we just did, you, you have all the tools to create, you know, your own symphony, and and it's a. Uh, I think that's a, that's kind of where you're, you're getting at there. You you can, and it's you know, there's a whole lot more in the form. There's it's, it goes on and on, but uh, that one you know that we're just getting we're we're starting with you know we start with the Wu Ji, the undifferentiated undifferentiated nothingness moving into the Taiji, which is the undifferentiated somethingness into the separation of yin and yang. And then we're moving heaven and earth. You know, that that's the, when we're circling around like that, those are, we're spinning the, uh, spinning the, uh, the heavens and the earth when we're we doing that. So the, uh, there's this, it has a lot of uh, Taoist implications in the, uh, in the descriptions of the form. And and the energies that it that it invokes. Yeah, Ron. There we go. Um, 
So when you talk about going into the nothingness, I still, I, I still feel connected. So Good. I guess what's the, I, I know like the, the nothingness isn't like nothing. <laughs> it's, Think of it more as moving toward insubstantiality or moving toward more formlessness or your emphasis or your attention is more on the non-stuff than on the stuff, right? So if you if you think about, you know, the energy is more non-stuff than say the fist, right? Okay. So so if, we're, if, if we're focusing on the energy, we're focusing more on the non-stuff than on the stuff. So we're moving in the direction of of no thing of lack of thingness and more into just a present moment awareness devoid of thinking okay where and it but that you're not disappearing that is you're still connected you're still there you're not you know you're not blotto you are yeah. You know, you're you're very present, but the mind is clear. So okay. All the the noise starts to fade away. So it's the direction we're heading in. So those right. that language that you know that the the nothingness and the somethingness and stuff like that. We're talking more about what is being created by the mind. Is it creating is it creating form or is it creating emptiness? And so you're capacity to do both is a part of you know competence you know if you if you can't create form then you can't really do much you know if you can't create emptiness then all the forms kind of glom onto each other and it's like there's there's no spaces between the notes and music you know there's there's just noise so being able to to regulate form and emptiness is the is what humans are trying to do. All right. That's what I'll try to do. Okay, cool. <laughs> Great. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you all so much. Oh, one more thing. Yes, Valerie. Are you just waving? No. We're, we go into stereophonic stillness. <laughs> ah. I want what she's been smoking. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And uh, great. So see you. Uh, see you next week. Thank you all so much. Bye, Bye, Maria. Maria. Bye.